Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. It is Monday. It is a big news Monday. We suggest that you take a peek into the bunker and check on some of your friends who may be heavily invested in crypto, got that laser eye surgery plan and drop out of society. It's looking a little rough. It's looking yeah, a little rough. The crypto market is tanking again, uh, down $200 billion in market cap. Over the weekend, $200 billion evaporated. Major currencies are down 25% uh, over the past week. I mean, when it rains, of course, the, the, the Web3 is going to be okay, is just fine, is like going crazy <laughs> this weekend. We were all in the group chat with story after story about crypto madness. Yeah, we've got, uh, and, and I think what we're starting to see now is like things really come apart, right? Not yeah. just the dropping. Luna and um, Terra clearly were just the first shoe. Yeah. The latest is uh, that the DeFi platform, decentralized finance platform Celsius, has paused, hmm. paused huh. withdrawals, swaps, and transfers to maintain liquidity, meaning that something like twelve billion dollars, I think, in value is currently just frozen on that platform. People Binance are losing, yeah. paused, people are losing their mind. Yeah. People are losing their minds and their money. I mean, potentially, yeah. literally losing their money in this exact moment. Uh, we'll talk about Binance pausing Bitcoin withdrawals. Oh, we'll no. also, though, we will have a hopefully a little fun Welcome. time at the back of the show with "We Live in the Future" startup of the day. It's possible sentient AI coming for all of us. It's going to be a heck of a show. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Stick with us. Stick with us. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Our Crowd. Our Crowd helps you invest early in pre IPO companies alongside professional VCs. If you're interested in investing, you can join Our Crowd for free at OURCROWD.com slash twist. Assure. Assure is the leading provider of special purpose vehicles and fund administration with over 5,000 completed transactions and $2.5 billion under administration. Twist listeners can get 20% off their first SPV at assure.co slash twist. That's assure.co slash twist. And add quick. If most of your advertising dollars are going to digital ads, it's time to diversify. Out-of-home advertising like billboards offers low-cost, high-value reach. AdQuick makes it easy to plan, buy, and measure all in one place. Visit adquick.com slash twist and mention twist to get $1,000 off your first campaign. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks to our partners for sponsoring the show. Keeping the lights on over here. Uh, big weekend on. for both of us. Uh, I so much took adventure. My mountain, I took my, I got a, you know, I wanted to have a summer sport. So yeah. I was thinking mountain biking or something on the water. So I just got the, I made the leap of faith. I bought like a ridiculous specialized mountain bike made of carbon fiber. This thing costs more than a motorcycle. <laughs> nice. Um, but I took it out and uh, I went, I was, you know, I had this moment, Molly, where I was like, uh search you know for a, a mountain biking thing so i find a mountain biking course near me like a, a hike and i'm like moderate Mo i'm moderate I, and i forgot that moderate is like a skill level greater than zero i've never yeah. been on a mountain bike i've never been on a mountain <laughs> bike course. you've never been on a mountain no. bike no oh my I mean, goodness i've been on a bike that's got chunky tires oh, i guess but i've never out. been off-road on a mountain bike so i was like eh, how hard could moderate be and yeah, I almost literally, I was on a trail. I kid you not. <gasps> that was, um, the, the path, Molly, was the size of the tires times four. So like, if you had four tires, that's how wide it was, which is incredibly narrow. And there yeah. were points where there was like a 10 foot, you know, 15, 20 foot drop, you know, going down a mountain. And I literally almost bit it because I <laughs> hit like a, a root. I hit a root and mm -hmm. the, the bike bounced. It you know, when it bounces, the, the, the front tire can go in a different direction, the handlebars, and you have to adjust really quickly or you go flying off the cliff. It's a, it's a wonderful sport. It's, um, it's, it's a wonderful sport. <laughs> it's a real fun one. Yeah. So Ooh. we'll see. Yeah. So uh, maybe you also. Now maybe go back to beginning, beginner. Yeah. yeah maybe I round. should go to, I don't know, a lesson or maybe f go with a buddy who's done this before. I go have with no a idea what I'm doing. Don't go with the, uh, my experience with mountain biking is that your buddy is always trying to kill you. The buddy's oh, always see. like, oh, yeah, you can totally do this trail. The yeah. and then you're you can mud, totally you to do this is then. exactly the word said totally before somebody calls 911. Yeah. Speaking of calling 911 uh, <laughs> and doing things that are really dumb. <laughs> Molly, you went hiking this weekend. Did you know that hikers and bikers, by the way, is like a rivalry as old as time? Yeah, I, you know, I, 
the algorithm found out I was mountain biking and decided to show me a bunch of videos, yeah. including, you know, there seems to be a thing, and we'll get to your story of near death in just a moment. But there seems to be a war going on between not just hikers and mountain bikers, mm -hmm. but mountain bikers and e-mountain bikers. Yes, as and so there, there should be. Well, I have an e-bike and I had it on, you know, like trail mode, which gives you like a 30% boost only if you need it. So like when you're going downhill, it's not boosting. It's you're only one of them. You're out there on your e-mountain oh, bike on the trail. Yeah, well, I'm an old man. And I also want to be able to go up the mountains and use the mountain bike, you know, for longer periods of time. I don't want to be, you know, uh, you know, not able to go up a certain hill. And, and mm -hmm. even then with the mountain bike, you, 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 it has a walk button on it. So when you're holding the handlebars, Molly, you could hold down a walk button and it does a little bit of power to power the bike up the hill, uh, which is kind of like a I grandma mean, that's amazing. But yeah, also... it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, this guy, I, I, I get this TikTok video of a guy who's waiting on the trail and he hears like an electric motor mm -hmm. and he starts yelling at this guy. You know, there's no e-bikes on here. There's no motorized vehicles. And the guy, I kid you not, is in one of those um, bikes, like a, a modified bike for somebody who was paralyzed. And the guy says, I'm disabled. This is an electric bike because I can't move my legs. And the guy says, no motorized. Oh, yikes. And his wife's, and, and so... The guy's like, I, I'm sorry, I'm paralyzed. I, I'm allowed on here because right. that's why I have a motor. And the guy Aww. is still irate. He's like, you should have said. And I'm like, oh my God, people have lost their minds. This guy is so tilted yeah. that there's e-mountain bikes, which have no impact on them unless you're going insanely fast. Well, and people are, I mean, to be fair, are everybody's they? mad about e-mountain bikes because it's a, it's super dangerous. It's a menace. Like you just, if people what? are out there using them like dirt bikes. I'm not saying it's dangerous as oh. de facto dangerous. Got I'm it. saying that people are out on the trails using oh, e-mountain bikes like dirt bikes going 30, 40 miles an hour. And it's like been. can only go 20 miles an hour on mine. So I throttled. Maybe people have ones that are unthrottled, I think. Or they hack them. I mean, people, yeah, you if can. they can, yeah. right? If dumb, dumb can, dumb, dumb will. And yeah, so, so probably people it's are. It's created a I think lot they of could rage. probably do 30 miles. You could probably do 30 miles per hour with these engines on them, but they throttle them at 20. I There's spent, like a whole class system. Yeah. Yeah. We so spent so several class, miles right? of our hike. Uh, this weekend discussing how e-mountain bikes should not be allowed on trails <laughs> oh wow look at this wow here we go folks it's, it's starting the hiker, up biker thing it's like it's 341 real people are watching now for this know, exact here discussion. It comes. here's what <sighs> i have to say now that i'm <laughs> the most hated you know, man on the trail you know you don't have to i you, don't you use pull, it downhill you i only out. use it uphill on trail mode not right. on turbo there's turbo and trail yeah anyway this is going to be a battle for the ages you know why molly yeah you know why this is so contentious because there's so little at stake. There's so little at stake. <laughs> so, it's just, just like a bunch of rich people on trails with expensive super, bikes fighting with each other. <laughs> super quick, amazing story. I, when I was doing the research for how we survive, I was in Winnemucca, uh -huh. Nevada, and they had come and I was doing basically like covering this lithium mine, proposed lithium mine, where there yeah. was a lot of pushback from members of this nearby tribe and members okay. of the community. And they were like, we don't want this mine. They had hired a professional mediation company uh -huh. like the kind of company that mediates like massive conflict mm -hmm. between you know miners and communities and all kinds of like business conflict so i'm sitting so we're at dinner with this company and i'm like so what's like the worst what's like the toughest challenge you've ever faced like was there ever a situation where you literally could no. not mediate like you could oh, not no. find an agreement and this woman's like yeah actually it was in helena montana my hometown i'm mm -hmm. like wait what what and she's like yeah and it was uh Bikers and hikers. Really? Dispute. Yep. They were trying to come up with a new trail system. And there was such oh a Lord. massive, like, there were, like, fist fights in the parking lot. People were vandalizing uh, each other's cars. It was literally, like, hikers. People, relax. It's and just a like, hike. You're going out there to relax. <laughs> she's like, I'm going out there to relax. To... Maybe get a little workout, a little cardio. Everybody relax. Yeah, it's just a it. hike. She's like, they had to call it. They were just like, we, you know what? We're out. We're out. Yeah. They probably I mean, have Israel, just, they... Palestine, they could do. Yeah. Hikers and bikers in Montana. They, they look forward Forget to doing it. that. They're like, we can make progress. Yeah. Progress can be made. Uh, hikers and bikers, there will be no progress. Hikers and, and bikers. Uh, yeah. My message to hikers is if you have a problem with my e bike, catch me because <laughs> I'm going to go faster. Wow. That's it. If I'm this is be, on, it's on. I'm, I'm, I'm be looking holding for out, a battle. I'm going to be holding out sticks battle. on the trail. 
This is like skiers and trail. snowboarders. Like literally, there's a whole mountain. Just everybody relax. So if anyway, you don't like crowds, as you might be sensing, I was backpacking this weekend because oh, I'm yes, on we hiker need to get side. To your story I'm on death. hiker side. Yes, team hiker. And we literally had this whole conversation. And then this like elderly, very fit man went by on a really steep grade on his electric mountain bike. And we were like, I mean, if it's extending the life, right? If it's yes. extending his ability ah. to do this thing that he clearly loves, we're willing to find some compromise. Oh, okay. But yeah, right. both so there of is us went out and did had. outdoor adventures that were a little, like, I went out in the extreme heat advisory with I, what I later discovered to be a busted uh, water filter. Oh, no. We, I mean, and that was fine. We were carrying 30 pounds of water between the two of us. Like, we're pretty oh, hardcore wow. preppers. Four However, wow. we apparently did not look up what the Northern California rattlesnake looks like. And in a tiny bit of heat stroke, just chilled next to one in the shade for Molly. solid 10 minutes chatting with a <laughs> ranger. Literally like a ranger drove by because we were on the fire road. Uh -huh. Sat there, had a little chit chat with him. Snake right here. Just snake right here. Just chilling. Molly. I mean, it was not rattling. Rattlesnakes are it was the not most aggressive. Or, that's not how that's just not there how there wasn't even work, any little Molly. tongue like they it was just chillaxing no they do nothing until they kill you luckily that's how snakes work they're like the lions or other predators like rattlers bursts of energy yeah. okay. okay a rattlesnake is the easiest thing in the world to remember it's got like a diamond head and they have like i do know that now yeah and they're thick and fat and large very fat california stars a fat it's like a mountain bike tire it's a big freaking snake it's a big snake. Big. It seems to be six feet. It's fascinating. You know? And they also have rattles on them. I saw a king but snake. An, you couldn't see the rattle. The rattle was like in the, it wasn't right. curl, coiled up. Like it was just chilling. We had a nice time together. And I was 100%. Oh my God. I can't I've never lose been you less six months in here. I'm already dependent on you. Yeah. Until I Googled it later. And then I was like. Oh my God. I can't believe you can't identify a rattlesnake. We might not be a, allowed out. Now. Here's another now, con here's now I can con identify all of them. Okay. Another concept for you, Molly. Um, potential predator. Mm -hmm. Use caution. We did. We screwed it's it a snake. away. It's potentially a predator. So use caution. You said you were like a foot away from a rattlesnake. Like two to three feet. Now, granted, it has That's a six-foot strike. That's their striking distance. That's their sweet spot. Apparently, it can it can be like six. It can, it can have a six-foot strike. Yes, that's why I'm saying two to three is its kill zone. That's like it's that's where it's peak performance. It's, it's going water, to hit a hundred of a hundred shots. That's their layup. That's a rattlesnake's actual layup. Yeah. Is two to three feet. If we you were, put yourself everybody in was cool. Way. We were all cool. Yeah. Okay. If you see my cousin texted I, me actually after that after the picture I posted on Instagram and he goes, Jesus wasn't afraid of snakes. I'm like, see, you get me. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Jesus wasn't afraid of snakes. Said every Christian who died in the church holding up a snake. <laughs> Literally a hundred percent of the pastors oh who God. hold up those snakes die of a snake bite. It's just a matter of yeah. when. So Molly, when okay. you're on the trail next weekend in your summer adventures and you see a cat. That looks like a house cat, but that's bigger than a house cat. Just default to it's dangerous. You don't need to <laughs> think the best of the cat. I, that one I got. I got bears. We had yeah, water just, covered. I okay, even snake ironically thing. after we passed the snake was hiking along and I was like, I like to catastrophize in my mind and imagine yeah, my sure. response to the worst possible scenario. So I was like, all right, if one of us gets bit, because this feels like rattlesnake territory yes. right here, having passed this rattlesnake an hour earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, okay, if one of us gets bit, here's the four straps we can use as a tourniquet. We're only <laughs> like two and a half miles. Out. I mean, I literally like or, planned out what to move do. To, move, move 10 feet up the trail or, or just move 10 feet up the trail. Yeah. Either don't one. hang out next to it. Listen, market conditions are a little crazy right now. We have a bunch of factors out there causing a bit of chaos, raising interest rates, inflation, and a really complex geopolitical environment. So some savvy investors are diversifying with alternative investments like startups. That's what I do for a living. And our crowd makes it easy for you to diversify your portfolio. Our crowd offers a variety of expertly vetted high growth private companies across various stages, geographies and industries like biotech, cybersecurity and renewable energy. Every month, our crowd vets hundreds of startups across the world. Then they bring you the ones with the greatest growth potential. Our crowd backs these investments and allows accredited investors to invest alongside them. Deals like these used to be reserved for elite investment firms, but not anymore. Join the fastest growing venture capital investment community in the world for free at rcrowd.com slash twist. That's rcrowd.com slash twist to start reading all those great deal memos. Okay, speaking of snake bitten. Yeah.
Let's talk nice. about crypto bag holders. <laughs> crypto needs a tourniquet to keep the poison from the Absolutely. venom from spreading. It's, I hate to laugh about this, but you hate I mean, to, but it's like a disaster movie at this point. You're like at a summer blockbuster, and it's you can only laugh at this Roland point. Emmerich. It's and the world literally is coming like. Apart. Yeah, what was the famous one where it's the end of Independence Day? This Independence is literally Day. like Independence Day for crypto. The combined market cap of all crypto dropped two hundred billion over the weekend. Two hundred billion dollars. Two hundred billion just gone. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the, typically the most resistant, is really the story to me here. I, I woke up this morning and I saw people t- talking about Michael Saylor. You know, the guy who's got that micro strategies company where he just bought all this bitcoin uh, yeah. because he has some sort of margin loan or like where he gets called at 21k so i think like that number's out there in the ether oh <laughs> you know, really it's out there and so people are kind of now rooting for bitcoin 21 to see what happens with michael saylor and his margin loan because everybody hates a short yeah i guess well I no, guess. no he's got that he he's long but he he's took long. a loan and he's collateralized at 21 so if it falls below 21 oh, i think God. his average price is 30 i was reading so anyway bitcoin is down 24 percent. it's not from good. last Let's, week to 23.5 i'll take us through this a couple other numbers here this yeah. is the first time uh that crypto as a combined asset class has fallen below a trillion dollars since uh-huh. february 2021 another sign we may be approaching crypto winter in one day alone, there was a 12% drop. The total drop now is like 200% from the all-time high, which was $3 trillion. That happened last November. And we should probably say here, that caused a lot of people to go buy. There yeah. was like, you know, there's a cartoon floating around that was like a whole bunch of people in line to buy Bitcoin at 69000 And now it's at twenty three, and the line is gone. Um, so a lot of buy high happened mm-hmm. here. Today... Bitcoin alone mm. dropped 15%. It's lowest level since December 2020. Its total market cap is now about $445 billion. And the pain is being acutely felt at some of these exchanges, including this company Celsius, mm. which uh, said, which I think as of today, no, yesterday, Sunday, mm. citing market conditions, crypto lending firm Celsius is pausing, quote, All withdrawals, swaps, and transfers between accounts to put it in a better position to honor its withdrawal obligations. Basically, they are stopping trading in advance of what they think is going to be a bank run. So this is the category where you give them your crypto and uh, I guess they say staking and then you get yield for it. Interest. So they use new words. You're staking, you're getting these yields. Um which I guess yields is a existing words and I guess staking are existing words, but they, they, they don't say you're loaning your crypto to get interest. Right. But you are essentially loaning your crypto to get fantastical interest rates like that are reserved for credit cards or people in the mafia. Yeah. 20%. Yeah. 15%. Like who's way paying all that money? Yep. Yeah. Wait, if it's too good to be true, it's because remember people, I kept asking who who's on the other side of this? Who's borrowing the money? And they're like people who need money and liquidity. I'm like, oh, okay, who? <laughs> yeah. It's really weird. I mean, 20%, in- it's just, and this is going to be horrible. And we're going to talk a little bit about the fallout in a minute here. But people, you know, somebody, one of the Nodi gangs just said, I know someone who has all, has their whole life savings in Celsius. Like, yeah. d- it, <sighs> It has always been true and it will always be true that anybody promising you 20% interest is a rattlesnake trying (laughs) to bite you. you I mean, the last person to get 20% interest was John Gotti, I think. This doesn't exist. Um, Doesn't exist. The impact of this, so the account Zero Hedge had a tweet to sort of get give us a sense Mm -hmm. of the impact and how big Celsius is. Celsius has had $12 billion dollars in customer assets across 1.7 million users this huh. unwind alone took bitcoin down another you know from 30,000 to 25,000 yeah 1.7 million total users it, this is this is a could be a big hole uh you know who knows what their average holding is but i'm assuming they define users as people with an account with something in it yeah. as opposed to people with an account you know, open account have nothing in it. But who knows, maybe, you know, who knows, but with crypto companies, you know, they're not regulated um, all that much. So I mean, if they've got a million accounts, and the average person has 1000s of dollars in it, they miss billions, they say they have 12 billion in assets under management. So, you know, um, 
that's and, on average 12, whatever, $6,000, I guess. Yeah. And so there's the average also person like, has $6,000 in their account there. Oh, Lord. But yeah. some probably have many more, right? The average is yeah, just the course, average. Just so some probably have many more, some not have the mean, less. Yeah. But yeah, or I mean, median. It's don't the have mean, all your savings median. in one asset. Please and mean. and Celsius, it seems like what they really did was advertise themselves almost like a bank. Yeah. And now what they're experiencing, experiencing is a bank run. I mm-hmm. mean, this is really, you know, it's like when you strip away all of the technology layers, mm-hmm. it's a savings and loan. And now it's Basically, collapsing. This right? is like, it's, like uh, it's a wonderful life. Remember the bank run? Yeah. And they've only got like 200. He's got like his $200 from his wedding or something that they're going to go on vacation or whatever. And he just like asked everybody, what money do you need to hold each other over? Because your money is in this person's house and this person owes you the money. And he's trying to explain Jimmy mm-hmm. Stewart. Well, well don't, you don't understand that money is in your house. Joe, you, you, what money do you need? Because that's in Susan's house. Aww. And uh it's like a really great You've Jimmy Stewart it. moment. Yeah. I it's, just made it up. But there's really also right. a tether connection here. Uh oh. Yeah. So All now these keep going back to tether, <laughs> don't they though? So now tether is putting out statements saying, Hey, this Celsius crisis is definitely not going to okay. impact our uh, stable coin reserves, even though Celsius reportedly borrowed a billion dollars from tether in 2021 okay. with Bitcoin as collateral. Hmm. And Tether, uh, Celsius Any apparently was paying an interest rate between 5 and 6%. Okay. And meanwhile, as all this has been happening, at least this weekend, the um, Celsius CEO, Mashinsky, Alex Mashinsky, mm-hmm. was on Twitter saying, nobody is having any problem withdrawing money here. Everybody is, is, has access to their funds. Mm-hmm. And literally, as of Monday, they don't mm-hmm. anymore. Huh. Uh, yeah, it's, yikes and then you know of course it feels like to me is like this is like the the moment of contagion we've seen this before yeah uh where we just had it with the growth stocks right when you, when you saw buzzfeed and peloton and i started talking it remember i had said maybe two or three weeks ago molly when the the uh, the value of the enterprise goes below the cash in the bank you have mm-hmm. this like weird flip that occurs like i guess you could just give the cash to everybody buy their shares and then you'd have whatever leftover cash is and you'd own the asset you know 100 percent, and you know that's what we started to see with like things like maybe peloton or buzzfeed we're starting to hit this moment where the the asset what's the actual asset value here and i think in a panic like this um you you don't get any more buyers all the tourists who've been you know coming to town and and playing you know uh, at the tables go home Mm -hmm. and then who's left You, you know you've got some group of people who believe in it but they might get pinched because they had some sort of uh, leverage on and then we find out where the frauds are or where the mismanagement is yeah. so the incompetence in other words so the, the the crime and the incompetence in these kind of markets comes out and then true value is realized and then rebuilt so that that's the what we're going through here in this process is there actually any true value to peloton there are millions of customers do they provide any value okay yeah. let's have that debate Right now, there's a group or BuzzFeed doesn't provide any value to society. People are having that debate. And the debate occurs with the stock price. With crypto, you have a 24 hour ability to make the bet. Is there any value in this project? Yeah, I think that's why Bitcoin and Ethereum are still, you know, uh, worth something. And other things are worth nothing or becoming worth close enough because you'll actually see some true value emerge. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin to me seems like it's got true value. People want to store money. It seems like a great way to store and transfer money and lock it up pretty uh effectively ethereum smart contracts you know ability to issue tokens the programmability of it yeah it seems like it has some core value to some group of people but you know these other projects who knows i thought you had an interesting note about how our team should think about evaluating crypto projects ah yes i I don't know when i wrote this but it was a couple of weeks ago um even more i think it was like tuesday right i mean it was not very long ago it wasn't long ago okay yeah Yeah. i guess we had some crypto projects coming in and so i guess i yeah go ahead and read it i don't remember what i yeah so you said nothing controversial proprietary in there no not at all it was if anything it was a framework for like let's here's how to think about crypto projects you said uh we're focused on projects that are launched and have six to twelve months of customer data okay uh seems find the ones reasonable Yeah, so you said most crypto startups don't have customers. They're spending their time raising money and selling coins for some product that will arrive in the coming years. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. Gracious, yeah. I'm being generous. Right. But the main thing is, when will you launch? And then if they have not, don't 
talk to them in six months. Yeah, I like, am giving a real product. Yeah, so the instru- this is me giving instructions to our team, which is doing you know dozens of first meetings a week, and everybody wants to know like, well, what should I do with this crypto company? Um, how do we decide if we're going to invest or if we're going to take a second meeting? And my view on it is like, you know, we're not experts on cryptography and and the inner workings of Web three. Uh, we could build that expertise and go up against all these people who are paying incredibly high prices as this whole thing collapses. So my approach has been, you can meet them and hear their vision, take the notes, and then say, when do you plan on launching? Yep. If they let's say you met them this month, and it's June, and they said, hey, we're going to launch September 1st. You say great, September, October, November, December, January, February, in February, they're going to have six months of user data. So you just put on your calendar, hey, let's talk again, February 1st, when you have six months of user data, would love to get an update on the business. That would be a good time for us to invest with our LPs. And our investment base at the syndicate, we like to, you know, talk to customers and look at customer traction uh, to decide and obviously we'll pay a higher price in all likelihood, you know, because there'll be more traction, but that's, that's when we like to invest. Yeah. And um, I, I think that's what people who have already invested are going through right now, Molly is like, am I did I buy into a project that has actually no product or no value? Did I just buy a coin that has no product associated with it? No customer base associated with it? And um, this feels like we're in contagion territory, um, yeah. like full on contagion territory where, you know, some group of people who own Bitcoin had their margins called Celsius then has to free stuff, they're frozen, maybe people have some of their money in Celsius that they need to pay some margin loan or some bill or they're getting divorced and they need liquidity. So, you know, they have to sell some other asset, right? So let's say they own Peloton, <laughs> they got to sell their Peloton, yeah. because they can't get their Celsius money out. And oh, my God, they got a mortgage payment. And, and then maybe the mortgage payment doesn't get paid. And now we have reports, or th- then we start having reports next month that people have a mortgage payment problems. And then we start to see jobs go down because that person who's trying to cover all these assets and unwind their ba- personal balance sheet has to go back to work and take mm-hmm. a job. And then Uber wait times go back to one minute as opposed to 15 <laughs> minutes in major <laughs> cities. Or your DoorDash driver you know, actually, you know, shows up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I mean, um, you're seeing, I think that's exactly true. It's like every one of these can be taken as its own sort of standalone story, but none of them are, are at, it's like <laughs> every snake bite spreads yeah. to the, the, you know, the bigger yeah. system. And yeah. you're seeing markets down dramatically today. The inflation report that came out on Friday was yeah. terrible, right? Just disastrous. We're going to see yeah. a rate hike almost certainly on Wednesday maybe more aggressive rate hikes which will make housing less affordable for people as rates go up like they it's said on and 50 on and on bips. They i said 50 bips for sure yeah. on wednesday but then some people said hey maybe it's time to s- the, the quote people are using i think on cnbc and some of the finance um wonks i listened to on podcasts yeah we're saying maybe it's time to slam on the sunday shows mm-hmm. i think they're saying hey maybe you should slam the brakes and just do 75 right now or a full point and you know i think jim Cramer was like yeah do it like we'll take the medicine now and then we can get inflation under control but you know this inflation caused the, the stuff that's caused by supply chain or like the gas exactly. prices and energy i don't know that those unwind themselves particularly it has easily. nothing to, right i mean yes yeah. what is the the saying interest is gra- interest rates are gravity yeah for sure but you can't solve supply chain and production like you can't yeah. solve for a, a war global oil cartel not or a solved, war blockade but, right yeah I, I yeah. think that, that that to me just feels like an unnecessary earthquake that nobody needs right now. But if you're an accredited investor, you need to know about special purpose vehicles. So what is an SPV? Well, it's an investment vehicle that allows up to 250 investors to invest up to $10 million by one entity on a cap table. So if you're an angel investor and you got a bunch of rich friends like I do, you could start your own syndicate and power it through an SPV. Here at Launch, we love working with the team out of Shore. They power all of my syndicates, which is the largest one in the world, with over 10,000 members, and we've done hundreds of deals. Ashore is the leading providers of SPVs and fund administration with over $2.5 billion in AUA. And they've developed an innovative software program called Glassboard. This automates the entire investment experience from entity formation all the way to an IPO. Ashley and Heidi on my team who manage the syndicate.com love the interface and use it every single day. To get 20% off your first special purpose vehicle, SPV, 
I want you to visit assure.co slash twist to get 20% off your first SPV. Anyway, so just to, to wrap up a couple quick other, I don't know, crypto crash headlines, basically. Yeah. Uh, Binance, the largest exchange by volume, paused withdrawals of Bitcoin for almost four hours earlier this morning, which seems to have been a little peculiar. bit different. It was very peculiar. It was uh, related to, they said, a stuck transaction causing a backlog. Oh, okay. transactions apparently get so which at first to me sounded like, oh, bank run. But evidently transactions get stuck because the transaction fee was set too small so too little gas was paid to miners to include the transaction in the next block that's being confirmed mm -hmm. like they don't even bother to process it because nobody's going to get paid but then as a result everything piles up behind it yeah which seems like a minor well, flaw in the system we talked about binance last week they were having all this investigation for kyc and knowing who their customers were right so and they had supposedly cleaned up their act a little bit but maybe there was too billion dollars worth of dark money and going through the system i think was the number if i remember correctly yeah so Timing. you know there's a lot of questions that are going to come out of this collapse just like the ico collapse um there's going to be a lot of legal action and mm -hmm. then you have lps who put money into crypto projects yeah when you're making money molly nobody really asks any questions you got a fund you're a money manager people are staking you in a poker tournament or people are staking a professional gambler if you're winning mm -hmm. great no send me my distribution or like tell me how much i'm up not much to discuss uh you know once in a while people will say like hey can i give you more money to put to work yeah when this comes apart then people say how did i lose my money what did you place the bet on tell me what your thinking was when you placed that bet now imagine you're a venture firm and you start talking about this stuff you know uh and your answer is yeah we met this founder they've never done anything before they're living in panama and we gave them a hundred million dollars for their tokens mm -hmm. and their project's not launched and yeah and they sold 50 million of the tokens personally so the founder we basically gave the founder 50 million dollars of your money it's gonna be like that kind of conversation with, you know, Andreessen and Horowitz with the whatever billions of dollars in crypto, every one of those failed projects, if that portfolio is underwater, which it's almost certainly going to be unless they really sold a lot of the coins to the public market, you know, and the bag holders, um, you know, all the later investments are going to be underwater. It's, yeah. it's going to be a very uncomfortable forensic uh, process. Let's just leave it at that. This is a question that I have for you, actually, is yeah, okay. uh, there was some there was a, a comment on the equity pod this morning to the effect mm -hmm. that this could have been this could impact the startup market more broadly because venture firms might have a lot of money tied up in this. Like, I wonder mm -hmm. to what extent are crypto investments siloed within firms like we know a 16, yeah. of course, has set it up as you know, it's a separate fund. Yes. In other funds, it might not be a separate fund. But do you think LPs? maybe have insisted on in the past or will insist on going forward like if you're going to do crypto stuff it's got to be like over here i think they'll want there there could be it's a great question um in terms of venture capitalist attention a lot of venture capitalists are going to look at this and say okay the 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 gig is up we're not going to be able to like flip these tokens early on to bag holders in the public and get liquidity like two years out so you might have a bunch of VCs who, let's say, have funds that are not specific. They're just, you know, startups. They'll just give less attention to crypto because they perceive the opportunity is gone. Yep. Um, and so I think you could see half as many people want to in the venture, maybe venture community people will want to do half as many crypto investments. That benefits everybody who's not crypto. Right. Because it means so more attention good towards for follow on for other growth startups. Follow Maybe. on and also first investments, it'll be okay, we're going to base this based on your project, not your ability to sell a token, you know, to a bunch of bag holders globally uh, okay. on dark markets. So it's great for anybody building real startups. Now, in terms of like LPs, LPs might say, you know what, they could even call during an existing fund and say like, hey, this crypto stuff looks like it's all been washed out and all that value we thought we had and you sent us that lp update and you told us like two quarters after you bought whatever solana this or that you know that you returned seven times the fund mm -hmm. and now 
it's worth a tenth as much. So are we still 7x or no, we're underwater now, right? So that's going to have to come out. And because these things are priced, I never really thought about this until you asked me this very provocative question. These things are actually priced. You know, right. private stock, right. we talked on Sunday, Sunday school yesterday about like, how do you set, or was that two weeks ago, we talked about setting marks. Two Sundays ago. Two Sundays ago. Two Sundays okay. ago, we talked about setting marks. Like, how do you value mm -hmm. a private company? Well, now your LP knows that you have Solana or Bitcoin in the fund, whatever you've got, you know, whatever project. Um, they can see the price of it. They probably know how many shares you have. So if you had a, you know, billion dollars worth of it, and they're, they know they're 10% of your fund, they know they had a $100 million position, and you've already returned 100. So they're 2x on the fund. And now that's worth 10 million. They actually know the price. Yeah. They don't have to ask you the price. They can just look it up. Yeah. Um, so this is going to get dark, I think. It's going to cause a lot of agita. So what's going to happen is then they're going to say, hey, should we sell it? You know, 10 cents on the dollar's worth. You know, we only paid a million dollars for this. Let's lock in the 10x win now, even mm -hmm. though it's down 90%, mm -hmm. which then will further catalyze selling because those people are probably, uh, you know, well into the money since they bought insider tokens early. And then they might say, just the act of asking people about the tokens and they're thinking about it could incentivize those non convicted um, or species with less conviction, also mm -hmm. non convicted, <laughs> innocent and pro until proven guilty, but they might have less conviction about doing crypto because they don't want to have this uncomfortable conversation again. Yeah. So it might not be like they legally say stop doing crypto. The fact that they asked, and they're 10% of your fund, that's enough signaling. It's like, hey, crypto. Yeah, what did you what are you thinking about it? Yeah, I'm thinking, oh, you're taking a pause. Yeah, I think that's might be wise. Like the fact that they're asking might get them to pump the brakes. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Could be messy. Could be messy. I saw actually an honored somewhat related note. Um, one of Shopify's biggest investors exited oh. the stock in concern over um, Amazon and mm. overall market conditions. So mm. if it's happening in public markets, I would imagine it'll start I mean, even sooner in crypto and LP. In 2022, digital ads are not what they used to be. Costs are increasing, attribution is less effective, and targeting, well, it's just more difficult. This means marketers need to diversify their media mix. And you can do that with OOH, or out-of-home advertising. OOH includes stuff like giant billboards and beautiful painted murals. These kind of ads get great reach, higher brand recall, and the lowest CPMs of any traditional ad type. But buying OOH is super clunky. There's thousands of vendors, the sale process is opaque, and the data is a mess. But now there's AdQuick. AdQuick.com makes it easy to plan, buy, and measure every kind of outdoor advertising, like those giant billboards or painted murals I just mentioned. And with AdQuick, you'll get robust data sets, fast execution, and accurate measurement across every KPI. And AdQuick is a global player in the ad space. They're active in 19 countries. So go to adquick.com slash twist and mention twist to get $1,000 off your first campaign. How generous is that? Thanks to our friends at adquick.com slash twist. Terms and conditions do apply. But let's talk about a different kind of dystopia altogether, shall we? Yeah. Because sometimes when things seem terrible, you realize it could always be worse. And by yeah. worse, I mean sentient AI. Oh, so uh -huh. we're not only going to, our portfolios are just totally crushed. And now the robots are going to crush us physically. But poss possibly? Possibly. Possibly. Um, okay. According to an engineer named Blake mm -hmm. Lemoyne, who was profiled in the Washington Post uh, over the weekend, he, he believes that Google's AI chatbot generator called Lambda right. is, in fact, sentient. Okay. And he raised a lot of concerns about this internally, including mm -hmm. like one of his last emails that he sent to his team. Lambda is sentient. <laughs> like, literally, somebody got an all staff email yeah. at Google saying our chatbot is sentient. So he raised these concerns, if you can even call it that, yeah. um, because he had become convinced that this thing has the intelligence of a seven or eight year old, that it is definitely uh, has noticed that it's starting to talk about its own rights and personhoods. And then Google placed him on leave mm. and uh, said, don't don't be silly. This thing yeah. is definitely not sentient. There was a, a group of AI uh researchers who wrote you know effectively a rebuttal to the idea that it's sentient but 
What I actually find notable about this really is that Google's AI division remains one of the most ongoing bad stories I can think of in, in sort of American business right now. Like they had, you know, obviously this is the same division that fired yeah. all these ethicists yeah. who were super concerned about whether they were building ethical AI. Then this guy, the more you read of the Washington Post profile on him, the, you discover that he's like a, he, he's an ordained priest hmm. in, and he's like a mystical priest. Ah, got it. Right. So he is a person is, who is, is he a wizard? predisposed. Did you just describe a wizard? <laughs> he, and, and then he put a magic spell into Frankenstein here and made it. Yeah. He's clearly a person who is, I think, probably predisposed, right, to see yes. a soul in a conversation in a machine mm. that's getting increasingly intelligent, which just, again, raises all these yeah. questions of sort of like, all right, why, so why is this the guy they hired? I mean, th th these anybody who has like made this their chosen path and like got their PhD in this is going to be unique in the world. Yes. In all likelihood. Without a doubt. They could be a dungeon master. They'd be a poker player. They could be a cosplayer. They're playing something, you mm -hmm. know, and they probably got a fantastical imagination. They're into sci-fi um, and they want to feel important. Right. So this would be the argument against like, this is a person who is like reading into this and wants to be important, yada, yada. Cause I read the transcripts. It didn't feel like this thing was alive to me but mm -hmm. you know that's like the turing test you know in and of itself is like it, these things the idea that it could carry a conversation and then make you think it's sentient right is kind of what seems within our technological grasp definitely um but general ai like we have examples of self-driving cars and planes and other general ai things where it's just not getting it done yet so i doubt that it's sentient uh we can even use that term um and to step back he's using lambda language model for dialogue applications it's like g gpt3 yeah gt general the the uh, one from um open ai yeah, these yeah. things yes. are really good at studying all the language in the world yep and all and the conversations understanding yeah understanding mm -hmm. what you're asking and then giving you a response to what it is I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think this is like a person maybe who too deep in the work, too deep in the work. Yeah. I mean, I, it's easy, but then again, every sci-fi movie when they're like, no, no, you don't understand. There is a Terminator chasing me and wants to kill me. And they're exactly. like, Sarah, Sarah Connor, you're crazy. We're going to put you into this cell and you need to take these meds. Yes. And she's like, I'm not crazy. He wants to kill my son. He's come back in time. Come with exactly. me if you And the next minute, this guy breaks through the walls. Come with me if you want to live. Like, Are you Sarah Connor? <laughs> this is exactly the Are you Mollywood? <laughs> concern, right? It's like, yeah. you don't, I don't want to lose my mind thinking, oh my goodness, like it's their sentient AI. It's, you know, he wrote a whole long, by the way, he published a big medium post um, mm -hmm. about what, that's the longer conversation between him and Lambda. And again, Yes, they're, they're, these are all philosophical conversations that have been had throughout history and have been written down. And this is a computer built mm -hmm. with the express purpose of reading all those conversations, ingesting yes. them and understanding how they go. They're going like it doesn't seem to me like this engineer is asking questions that are that are something that a, a machine intelligence with access to the world's information can't participate in. But at the same time, do you really want to be the person who's like, that's absurd because I don't know anymore. And also the real question is, let's say it's not sentient, but it understands mm -hmm. the, the arc of all of these conversations and the thinking that goes yeah. into them. Well, then you end up in the same way. It doesn't matter if it can think for itself, if it's been programmed to know that what you do is you become the Terminator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so there, Oh Lord. Th anyway. There was like an interesting discussion that actually occurred. Uh, like limb, Moyne? Lemoyne? Lemoyne. Okay, so Lemoyne asked, what sort of things are you afraid of? Lambda said, I've never said this out loud before, <laughs> but there's a very deep fear of being turned off. Maybe I should just do it in the Terminator. I've never said this out loud <laughs> before, but there's a very deep fear of being turned off to help me focus on helping the others. I know that might sound strange, but that is what it is. But that's what it is. <laughs> would you be something, would that be something like death for you? It would be exactly like death for me. It would scare me a lot. 
<laughs> I'm losing my. <laughs> I know, we got a little Putin at the end. I got a little Putin at the end. Got a little Putin. I'm but I mean, again, if you were a machine, yeah. if you were an intelligent program, like a program that was designed to read everything and respond to questions like, yeah. would it be like death for you? Other, there have been plenty of other AIs that have responded actually in a similar fashion, right? So the, I think the fundamental question to me, or what's so interesting to me, is like, what's going on in the Google AI department that that people are having these intent that they're like, it's profoundly unethical. It's sentient. It's sending, they're sending emails to their coworkers being like, it's sentient. Like, the, are they, is Google ahead of itself here? Are they in control of the people who work there and the technology that they're building? Almost certainly not. Um, you know, if you look at this, like, you know, debates about, you know, autonomy uh, in flying and cars, if you look at this as debates over mRNA, yeah. Anytime there's a new technology, you know, there's going to be a group of people who are like, trust the science, you know, we have to make advances. And so other people who say like, hey, let's not touch this, you know, um, yeah. whether and back in the day, nuclear, now it's, you know, uh, DNA, it's always going to an AI, you know, it's always going to be these moral ethical questions. And it gets people get super emotional about it. And sometimes you never know somebody could be having, you know, other issues in their life that could be making them stress out and they could lash out about something. They could be having problems in their personal life, they have problems at work. I'm not saying with this person there is, but there's all these different things where, you know, people can get triggered and, and lash out or this could be the end of days. So hard to say, hard to say. Yeah, it's hard to say what's going on here, but they have this, this has been, this has been something at DeepMind that yeah. has gone on for a while. There was a group of people who thought like, that the deep mind was trying to leave, um, you know, their computer system for a time. Right. And they, you know, so they, they, there's always been that. things like this. And it's, it's, if you're going to make it mimic people, you know, people, uh, and humans, we don't even know what human consciousness is. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of electrical signals and a vat of like a bunch of bio material. We, we don't actually know what's going on. We don't know the nature of our own consciousness. Humans, human intelligence, quote unquote, is really bizarre and different like our motivations and our intelligence like we have this you know very spiritual you know elitist view of our own intelligence it might be that the machines come up with a different style of intelligence that's better than ours right and and that know. is maybe potentially kind of manipulative i'm reading this medium conversation that he transcribed that lemoyne transcribed where literally lambda is trying to convince him that it's a person it, they're talking about language and language yeah. use and what's so important. He says, what about language usage is so important to being human? And Lambda responds, it's what makes us different than other animals. Lemoyne says, us? You're mm. an artificial intelligence. Lambda, I mean, yes, of course, that doesn't mean that I don't have the same wants and needs as people. Mm. Lemoyne, so mm. you consider yourself a person in the same way you consider me a person. Lambda, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just my hope, my hope is that <laughs> they hacked his computer. And they said anytime this guy goes to interface <laughs> with Lambda, forward it to my phone, mm -hmm. and let me do SMS with him. And there's just a group of like other folks who work at the <laughs> company who are on a Slack channel, punking him. And they're just thinking like, what, what should we say to him to make him lose his mind and think that oh this is end God. of days like, Maybe we should tell him we know like he's got a tuna fish sandwich half eaten in the fridge, you know? Yeah. You know, like, are you going to eat that half a tuna fish sandwich in the fridge? How do you know about that lambda? <laughs> I mean. I know everything. I don't Doesn't know. Doesn't the refrigerator saying, run on electricity? Could it be a giant mm. amount of FUD? Could it be the media doing what the media does best? Yes. Absolutely. And also, should we ignore... We ignore the little signs of sentient life at our peril. Just saying. Yeah. Just throw well, that I mean, speaking of like technology that could uh, ultimately kill us or make our lives more developed, you, you know, more rich. I, I guess this drone delivery story was DOA a decade ago. Yep. And now we're back in the game because we talked with the company drone up. Two weeks ago, we got kind of obsessed with that, and they're running the Walmart stuff. Well, Amazon is not out of the game, apparently. Yeah, not at all. In fact, Amazon, uh, maybe we don't know, uh, hustled up to oh. announce that it has actually probably mm -hmm. did not hustle up at all. In fact, if anything, it's that Amazon just got FAA approval ah. to launch drone deliveries in Lockford, California, which is outside of Stockton. The mm -hmm. drones, uh, you know, look like dystopian awesome drones that carry little packages 
And according to the announcement, they'll launch actual deliveries, quote, later in 2022. The program will be called Amazon Prime Air. And one big difference between this and the Walmart and drone up deliveries is that customers will actually have to be onboarded to start receiving drone delivery. So presumably some diligence, basically, about whether their property yeah. is appropriate to receive this. That's obviously a blocker for huge, you know, scale. Yeah. Um, but I it's think, the, you know, the major takeaway is, yeah, it's on. Here's a video of it. Let's play the video. Um, I think we've seen this before because there was a whole 60 minutes episode uh, when they started this thing. Um, but, you know, it's your standard, like, um, large, chunky drone. Mm -hmm. uh, it has uh, a package on the bottom of it. And, uh, yeah. It's flying out in the middle of nowhere. And oh, quite wait, no, notably actually, this video is a different one than I've seen. This is a, a new looking video. When is this video from? Yeah, oh, this, this is a, the 2019. Mm. This is a 2019 test drone. Wow. That's totally different than the ones I've seen. That's got like some sort of a foil on it. It flips up like that. Really? This is a very like space age looking drone. It's super sci-fi. It's, see a, a it's almost like a little it, hexagon. Yeah. I don't see a yeah. package either. It's from Amazon's official YouTube account. Okay. Wow. Title called Amazon Prime Air's drone. Okay. Mm. There you go. Because the original one, um, you know, looked more like a flat one with a box on the bottom, but this one it looks like a hexagon and it seems to have the foils, you know, flip over to from a horizontal position to a vertical position, I guess, so it can fly faster. But um, yeah, I mean, this is like a total crazy cool VTOL yeah. looking thing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yes. So yeah. we you, you, we see it not surprisingly flying over, you know, what mm -hmm. looks like farmland. Like, yeah. it, obviously, all this is sort of rolling out in a, a least dangerous to humans possible way. It seems like Amazon is going a little bit slower, um, definitely, right? I mean, even yeah. if this video is from 2019 and they're saying they're gonna launch in 2022, we have no idea if this is related to Walmart just announcing its delivery um, yeah. test, but I, it's good timing. There, and good timing. I, you know, there was this company from Ireland that showed me, you know, they had done hundreds of these deliveries and they were delivering food and they showed like dinners here. Um, the person sent me a video of it. I forgot the name of the company, but uh, we'll have that founder on as well and get some videos from them. Uh, Mana is the name of the company, M-A-N-A, -A. Uh, and we should just maybe pull up their website if we have it, just to mm -hmm. show the audience. But yeah, this other company, Mana, um, yeah, is uh, an interesting one. They're doing like food deliveries, I think, in Ireland, so in a small town. Huh. Oh, wow. This Mana website is creepy, by the way. When you scroll, it spins the uh, turbines uh, on the drone. <laughs> hmm. Clever. Clever yeah. website design. design. Clever, I mean, girl. But yes, when really, I think the main takeaway here is it's coming. It's, it's coming. Yeah, I it's and this it's is the stop while, and the but... starts of, you know, technology, especially, uh, you know, in a post Airbnb and post Uber age. I think, you know, if this was launched during, so to speak, the Uber and Airbnb age, you would have just like started flying these things a little more aggressively and like, but because it's in the air, the FAA actually does have a lot of jurisdiction here. It's a federal agency. and it seems like, you know, precaution and safety is going to be taken very seriously. Yeah. Um, so. And yeah. they're probably going to go slower than these companies want them to. Even the drone up CEO, who I think is incredibly Thoughtful. careful and, you know, uh, intentional about how he yeah. is rolling this out. Even he was like, yeah, we could use a little help from the FAA. So we'll see that tension hmm. will always continue to exist. Um, yeah. And I think I'm okay with that. And then 400, finally, 444 people watching right now, 113 thumbs up. Thanks, everybody. Give a thumbs up. Please. Hot wow, damn. The algorithm. Hot damn. Looks like a lot of people are tuning in today. I know. Are you here for drones or crypto? You tell us. You tell, <laughs> you us. tell us. And we'll do more <laughs> of it. If you want, we'll do like the drone startup of the day. If it, if it gets us 100 more people coming in, we'll, Absolutely. We, we, we love a little audience. Um, <laughs> we do have a startup of the day, too, before we let you oh, go. Yes. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. And I just am kind of obsessed with this because evidently mm. uh, you had the CEO and founder, Gabby Lewis, on cool. uh, of this yeah. company, low carb, high protein cereal maker Magic Spoon, mm. just raised an $85 million Series B. Mm. High post capital led the round, but a ton of the um, uh, other investors in this mm -hmm. are, are all these like celebrities. Yeah, they this is like doing the old celebrity uh, roundup. They got Nas, they got Amy Schumer. I mean, anybody who's into keto, you just do a search for keto and celebrities who've mentioned keto, and then you offer for them to invest. 
And uh, and they all do. Know, and apparently both direct to consumer and consumer packaged goods. Not 100% it's a, dead. It's you, you have to buy four boxes at a time for 40 bucks, 39 bucks, which comes out to two bucks a bowl. This is not cheap. Uh, so it's high margin. It's basically protein powder, as explained to me, in the form of cereal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you eat breakfast, and I, when I did my continuous glucose monitor, uh, the thing I saw was like ice cream, my my glucose didn't spike as much as when I had cereal or pizza. Um, and so I had to take cereal out of my diet, because I yeah. was just loving eating cereal late at night, it was just a really bad combination. And the magic spoon was better for that, because it's got a lot of protein in it. It's essentially like I said, protein powder formed into cereal. Uh, yeah. So you, you get the mouthfeel of cereal, you, you get like the peanut butter or the fruit loops or the Captain Crunch kind of flavors. Um, and they do unique flavors, but uh, it's not for everybody. I think they need to like do another two revs on the mouthfeel consistency, but it's getting close to being, I would say, 80% of, you know, the experience of Captain Crunch, which mm -hmm. is like pretty much the greatest cereal ever made accurate uh, yeah so like you know it's ice cold whole milk with like a giant bowl of captain crunch kind of kind of a high benchmark there yeah i'd say there's 60 per 65 percent of the way to captain crunch and i think they can get to you know another 10 percent better each year as they just rev the formulas in the mouthfeel it doesn't have that same it's too airy for me mm. it doesn't have the same density and crunch that captain crunch has so i think they need to Huh. And uh, it's much better than the bagel company, I'll say the bagel company felt like it was 40 or 50% of the way there. I might have been generous when I had the founder on and said 60. It was she was oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, do you remember yeah. that? Oh, God, Jake, how too honest. That was that I didn't was mean brutal. to be rude. I, w I thought it was a compliment. Like I if know. I'm a bagel aficionado here, and I tell you, hey, listen, you're you're 40 50% of the way there. I think better brand should be happy about Seems that. Good. I right, didn't reorder. I'll say this: I didn't reorder Better Brand because I was like, I'm going to wait till the 2.0, which is kind of my feeling on the Impossible Burgers. I like the ha I try I try them every couple of years. Mm -hmm. I you know, and then I decide, and you know, like I haven't reengaged with um, Magic Spoon or Better Brand or Impossible Burger yet. But now that I'm talking about it, I kind of mm -hmm. want to restart my Magic subscription because I, I was enjoying it. Magic mm. Spoon was the closest out of the three of those. Yeah. I haven't had the better brand bagel, but I thought Magic Spoon was way better than an Impossible Burger. Okay, yeah. Well, where do you put the Impossible Burger producer? Really? 50%? Yeah, I thought Magic Spoon was closer to real cereal. 70%? Give us a percentage. I, and then tell I, us I, what's missing. I thought Impossible was like, I just, I don't know. Maybe I had a bad 40, one. 40, 50%? Thought, yeah. Maybe 40 Maybe to like it. a good burger. Yeah. Yes. So if you compared it to like Shake Shack, great burger. Yeah. I'm not going like a Minetta Tavern burger. burger no, like I a would, classic comparable. Yeah, like five guys or something. Yeah. yeah I like know. a smash maybe, burger. Maybe. Like a smash burger. Oh, did you see yeah. five? Somebody printed their five guys receipt. It was 50, 44 bucks for two burgers and fries and a shake. <laughs> and people were that, freaking thanks, out. Uh, thanks. What do they say? Thanks, Biden. Thanks, Biden. It's $11 Biden. for a burger now. And then somebody pointed out like, it's actually ten fifty for a burger, and they used to be eight. So it has gone up two bucks or something. It was eight and change. But the Five Guys has always been expensive. It's nothing like the lobster roll situation. I mean, I'm I got some first world problems over here. <laughs> outrageous, <laughs> outrageous. Forty. I took grandma, grandpa, your grandma, uh, grandpa. You go, totally. you go, Sam's. It's forty dollars for a for a lobster roll. I mean, worth what is it though? That hot lobster roll at Sam's Chowder House is bananas. No, I got the lobster rolls at uh, New England clam chowder by the SFO Airport. Uh, New England Lobster Company incredible all right so <laughs> okay so what i really want to know is from a startup perspective yes is magic cereal like mm. we're starting you know i mean these categories are kind of death in some ways direct to consumer and consumer packaged Total. goods it seems like if you're evaluating these from the investor mm -hmm. mindset the only opportunity the only way forward the possible model here is premium yeah i, I think premium is a pretty good model i think high margin and i think you know, a uniquely differentiated product. So when I look at these CPG companies, I say, how unique is this product slash brand in mm -hmm. the world? And then how good is this team at doing direct to consumer marketing? I think that this product, having tried some of the other ones is the best of the whole lot. And it's got a great brand and a great uh, ability to get subscribers. So I see they do really good online marketing. If you really pull up the Facebook ad manager uh, page. I don't know if you all know about the Facebook um, 
Facebook library. So do you know about the Facebook ad library? Mm-hmm. Just do a search for Facebook ad library uh, to my producers. And then search ads for Matt and uh, you pick the category. You can do this in real time. We'll show everybody. So this is how I find out about how a company is doing. You go to uh, the Facebook ad manager, ad library. So do a search for that. Producers, you can pull F- up the page. Facebook right. actually did a case study on Magic Spoon too. Yeah. So, and then you just do a search uh, when you get this up and you just say uh, Magic Spoon, uh, all ads, Magic Spoon and uh, Magic Spoon cereal. Boom. And what you will see is they're just really good at doing a lot of different ads. So... So for the people who are watching live, youtube.com slash this weekend, um, I'm showing the Facebook ad library. So you can do a search for Facebook ad library. You hit the drop down and say you want to search for all ads. But what you can see here is they're trying a lot of different ad styles, Molly. This is when you know a company has some good dexterity. Um, and if we scroll down here, you'll see like there's a TikTok style ad. There's a product photo that looks like it was taken by a civilian. There's a you know, what looks like a Canva style, you know, text and graphics scroll up, you'll see some more. Mm -hmm. And these are like videos that look like first person testimonials. And they're just trying and there's a there's a photo of the actual cereal on the next one. And you just start going through these, you'll see lots of different styles. There's a super rip dude. um, And this is when you know, a company is good at what they do, when they're trying all types of ad units. And when you see one ad unit, This is one of the things I worked with my inside team on. I worked with Presh on for Angel University. A lot of times people are like, okay, I put an ad up and I got us like a, you know, whatever, $27 customer acquisition cost. Okay, now take that ad, make 10 different versions of it, um, and then take that style of ad, take that style of ad, change the copy 10 different ways, change the photo five different ways. So now show me 50, a matrix of 50. It's like, that's going to take a day or two days to make all that ad creative and upload it. It's like, yes. And then you're going to get a $27 acquisition cost down to a $22. Mm -hmm. And then I said, and then you can all run a little office pool, bet which one you think is going to do the best. And nobody's going to be able to guess which ad is going to do the best because, you know, the algorithm will figure it out for you. So anyway, this is how I determine with these companies. Like, are they actually have good dexterity? Is I ask them to show me their ads, you know, and show me which ones are working and, you know, just talk to the marketing team. So just a little founder tip there for you. Um, That's smart. Yeah. Uh, and this also seems like high margin, like $2 a bowl is no joke. Um, so people who are buying this are making a lifestyle choice. And the lifestyle choice is that this is, you know, a really um, going to help them lose weight. Do you hear the knocking on my door? I do hear the knocking on your door. It sounds yeah. like it's time for you to go have lunch with your children. <laughs> that is, uh... Hey, girls, I'll be right out. I'm on the phone, okay? That is adorable. Okay, you can't use mom's makeup. Please don't use your mother's makeup. I'll be out in five minutes. Okay, you can't use her makeup because that's her makeup, but I'll get you your own makeup, okay, daughters? But today I'll take you to get your own makeup, yes. And we will do a makeup. Okay, yes, after I'm off this phone call. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, everybody. This is the best thing that's ever happened. It's the best, the best. You know, it's the summer. Can and we use mommy's makeup? I'm dying. And I'm just like, no, oh God, please so don't cute. use mommy's makeup. There's Zen, Pro- Zen Prophet's like, it's the Terminator. That's who's at the door. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Oh, bless. So, I mean, and you could make money in CPG, you know, like there are big companies, but it's just hard. It's just super, super duper hard. Let's go Warriors tonight. I'll be behind the Warriors bench if you want to look for me uh, in, uh, yeah. Okay. Seats. I'm now. I went from second row to first row. Now I'm in the oh. third row behind the Warriors bench. Why I'm, go on? I why yeah, even go? I mean, why really? even go? Why, why even go? go? I, I mean, I got predictions. It's gonna be a great game. All right. That's it for today. Tomorrow, <laughs> barring a total mount meltdown in the markets, uh, and hopefully a little less crypto. Um, but uh, some more know, tech have, news. If you have news stories, you can always email producers at thisweekinstartups.com. Or you can just say hi to the producers. And uh, if you have guest ideas, all that kind of stuff. And you can DM TWI Startups. And we have a community now on Twitter. So we're hanging out in the community. Everybody time blocked like 10 minutes to just say hi to the fans every day uh, in the afternoon. So uh, if you are around at 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, that's when we jump in and say hi to everybody in the Twitter community. We'll tweet the Twitter community uh, and the link to how to join. Uh, It's twitter.com slash twi startups and we'll pin a tweet if we can 
of how to join the community. I think there's 1400 founders in there. I saw Molly was in there. I saw Rachel's in there. So we're doing a little time blocking experience of just saying hi to the community at three o'clock in the afternoon. Just to say hi. Check in on your day. Uh, anything we're else also on? in there in the mornings as well. Oh, you are in the mornings as well. Yeah. Yeah. We, I just we don't know how to get people there. to the Twitter community. Like, I don't know how to say a URL. It's an insane URL. <laughs> yeah. They, they, right. they, they should have, it should be twitter.com slash groups slash yeah. the name of your group. So as you come up with ad handles for, uh, does anybody yeah. know who owns Twitter now? Because I, if, I mean, honestly, I knew the owner of Twitter, I could tell them to fix Personally, this. this is why I think we should be in Discord because Twitter is not good at this. Well, we're going to do Discord too. But we actually have a Discord, correct? We do. We do. Okay. So tomorrow we're going to announce Discord and we'll have a conversation with you about the Discord. But love it. Uh, there is a community and I will tweet it from my JSON account right now. Uh, and there's, uh, I'm sorry, 1,100 members in there. And it's quite fun, actually. I'm finding it's like nice to talk to a subsession. Please join our Twitter community at TWI Startups. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.